children are meant to play. Children are meant to learn. Children are meant to live their childhood. But not all play and all learning guarantees a pleasant childhood. Slum life is hard and it's hardest on the children. These little angels are often found working as casual labourers in hotels, in restaurants, in garages, you name it. You will find them selling a dozen knickknacks at traffic signals and along pavements. Child labour is a crime as defined by the law. In Mumbai, that would be hard to believe. But Hindustani Covenant Church saw hope where most would see despair and they chose to undertake a challenging task a task of change. Swedish Hindustani Covenant Church has been working in India since 1939 in collaboration with the Mission Covenant Church of Sweden. HCC today has 109 congregations with 15,000 members. Presently, it is also carrying out development activities at 26 locations in 10 Indian states, serving more than 1,50,000 poor and marginalized people. Hindustani Covenant Church also worked with the laborers staying in Mumbai's Valmiki Nagar in 1999. These labourers, including women and children, are employed in sweeping nearby localities. Many children also collect waste products like iron scraps from the nearby factories situated at the seashore. Livelihood also came from sorting garbage at Govandi, Asia's biggest dumping yard spread across 500 acres. The dump yard was home to scores of families who had migrated from different parts of India in search of a brighter future. Like Valmiki Nagar, Rafi Nagar, Shanti Nagar and Sanjay Nagar shared a similar fate and the children bore the brunt Over 3,000 of these slum kids had never attended school. After all, selling garbage helped them earn a living and help add to their meager family income. They were caught in a vicious circle of poverty, deprivation, economic exploitation, poor health conditions and illiteracy. HCC understood the gravity of the task at hand and approached these children and their families with patience and compassion. So the volunteers started by conducting surveys in the slum surrounding the dump yard. It helped them identify the problems faced by the children. They made house visits, encouraged the parents to send their children to non-formal education centers. Counseling was provided to the children individually and in groups. Non-formal education centers teach the children how to read and write, most for the very first time. A warm meal serves two purposes. One, nutrition. And two, an incentive to attend classes. Health checkup camps are arranged at regular intervals. Psychosocial care is also provided to the children, which includes 
physical exercises, games, and yoga. Children groups are formed. Skill training is given to them where they learn bag making, candle making, etc. HCC volunteers know the importance of parental consent and interest to keep the project alive. Routine interaction with them helps volunteers share the nature of HCC's work and the progress of the kids with the parents. We know things are looking up when the parents themselves suggest improvements to our system. The children are excited about attending classes. Most are dedicated, hard-working students. Their families are pleased too. After all, any parent wishes their children more than what they have for themselves. Ask Ganesh's parents. Ganesh is nine. He lives with his parents, three brothers and two sisters in Rafinagar. The entire family earns a living from the dump yard. Ganesh had health problems and was also addicted to drugs. But the efforts of HCC have turned him into an active student. He proved to be a promising student and with the help of the volunteers is now attending formal school. Ganesh is studying in class 3. I want to be a doctor and help poor people, he says. Yes, Ganesh's parents are proud. Then, there's Sangeeta Rama Vagmare, just 12, and had already joined her parents collecting rags from the dump yard. At home, she took care of her younger sister and helped her mother with domestic chores. Last year, one of our local volunteers approached her and encouraged her to visit the center run by HCC. From the very day she turned up, she showed a keen interest in education. Today she's in the fourth standard of a nearby school. She and her parents never forget to thank the volunteer who helped her get admission and they pray for the success of HCC. HCC gave these underprivileged children a chance at literacy, a warm meal and basic health support. But the people of the affected areas discovered much more. They discovered hope, hope for their children, for their future. Children must play. Children must learn. Children must live their childhood.